Hey guys, thanks for being part of a life group here at Vaughn Forest. Uh, we're kicking off our series, When Love Came to Town. And really this series is our Christmas series all about reflecting and celebrating the fact that Jesus came for us, that God came, uh, born of a virgin, uh, took on the form of man and lived a sinless and perfect life so that we could be brought back into relationship uh, with our Father. And so it's, it's just gonna be an incredible series and a great time. We're gonna kick this series off talking about the fact that, that Jesus came so that we could be brought back into the family of God. It's an amazing thing when you think about it, but yet Jesus, the Son of God, came to this earth so that we could be brought into the family of God. You see, God is a God who is all about adoption. You see, we, we are fatherless children on this earth. Our sin has separated us from God, but yet love came so that we could be brought into God's family. And one of the verses that uh, is really interesting and that, that I love is in Romans 8, 15 through 17. Check out what the Bible says. It says, uh, for you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you receive the spirit of sonship. And by him, we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. These verses are so powerful and so encouraging because the spirit that he's talking about is all throughout the Scripture, all throughout the New Testament, the Bible teaches on the Holy Spirit. And when someone is not a follower of Jesus, God's Spirit does not dwell in them. You see, we all are wandering through this world. We don't have a heavenly Father because of the sin that has separated us from Him. But yet God so loved the world that He sent His one and only Son that whoever will believe in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And when a person comes to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and they put their faith and trust in Him and they ask Him to come into their lives, forgive their sin, save them, rescue them, their life becomes clean. They are covered by the perfect life of Jesus. Uh, the life of Jesus is applied to them in the eyes of God. And when that happens, not only is that person's sins forgiven, but then God deposits His Holy Spirit to now dwell in the heart and life of that person for the rest of their life here on earth. And that's what this whole relationship is about. It connects us to God. And so when we read these verses in Romans, it's such an encouraging thing because we've not been given a spirit that makes us fear again. We, we don't live in fear, but we've received a, we received a spirit of sonship that God literally has deposited. Ephesians chapter one says that his spirit has been deposited in us, that it is a mark. It, it is God's literally like God branding us right. with his mark inside of us, that we are his, that we are his children. And now the spirit that dwells in us, it is literally crying out from within us, Abba, Father, because now we're in this relationship that we've been created to be in, but yet was missing in our lives because of sin in our lives. And it's an amazing thing because now this spirit testifies that we are his children. But not only are we his children, we are heirs and right. co-heirs with Christ. We become part of the family of God. I mean, if, if you ever doubt that God loves you, you just think about the fact that he adopted you. Hmm. If you're in one of our groups and you're watching uh, and, and you're a follower of Jesus, man, God has adopted you. If you're in one of the groups and you're not a follower of Jesus or exploring the claims of Christ, then God is extending an offer to you, inviting you into his family to be adopted into the family. Uh, Chad, I want to ask you, uh, when you think about the fact that God would love somebody like us, hmm. like me, like you, who does not deserve his love, who doesn't deserve to be in his family because we know what we've done. We know the things that we still struggle with, but yet he invites us into his family. How does that make you feel? How does that challenge you, encourage you? 
uh, <clears throat> it's just, it, it's mind boggling because when, when you think about, there's almost no stronger relationship than between a father and a child. And I think about, I've got two little girls, they're seven and four, and there's nothing I wouldn't do for them. There's nothing I wouldn't do for them. And, uh, and, and it's, when you think that God says, you can call me Abba, daddy, you can mm-hmm. call, literally that's what it means. Well, you can call me daddy. You can be that close to this all powerful God of the universe who loved us so much that he stepped out of heaven, came down to this earth and, and lived and died and rose again for us. I mean, it, it just, it, it blows my mind. And, you know, uh, I talked about this on the weekend, you know, I'm adopted. And, and so I know firsthand kind of that, that relationship of, of in, in really like when people say, well, do you know who your parents are? I'm like, yeah, I've lived with them my entire life. You know, just because they weren't mm-hmm. the ones that physically gave birth to me, that doesn't mean they're not my parents in every sense of the word. Right. And God, our father, he is our, when we say, Jesus, I, I want to follow you. God becomes that close. He becomes our daddy. And scripture says that we can boldly approach the throne of grace with confidence. I mean, imagine, imagine, you know, this, this king that, you know, and all throughout the Bible, you'd hear these stories about, you know, where people would go into the king's th- courtroom the throne and how if the king didn't show grace to them, how they, would, they could be put to death. Mm-hmm. And, but what we know is, is that the Bible t- says that we can approach the throne of grace with confidence because right. we are heirs. Mm-hmm. We are children. We are co-heirs with Christ. And that's, it's just something that's almost too wonderful to even believe is real, but scripture tells us that it is. And that gets me excited. That makes me thankful. And that just, I mean, it's, there's no better thing in the world. You know something, and, and you may have something to say about this too, Kenny, that is so encouraging to me. Because if you're anything like me, it's easy for your relationship with God at times to kind of be up and down based on your emotion, right? right? Based on your circumstances. But one of the things about these verses that is so encouraging is that it says, you have received the spirit of sonship and by him we cry, Abba, Father. It is by the very spirit of God that he has put in us that we cry. It's not even in our own efforts. Mm -hmm. It's not in what we conjure up, but yet it's God's spirit that dwells in us that cries from within us to God. And that's what, causes us to surrender our lives on a day-to-day basis. That what, that's what causes us, us to worship God. That's what causes us to serve God. It's not even in our own effort, but yet it's in what God has deposited mm. in us. It's even beyond us. That's how much God loves us. That's how good right. God is to us. Now, of course, there are things you can do to suppress the work of the Spirit in your life. Right. Get caught up in sin, not read, your, not read right. God's Word, not pray, just disconnect from God. But even even in those moments, and you may be one of those people, you're feeling conviction right now. The right. reason you feel conviction is God's spirit trying to awaken you to turn back to the one who has rescued you. It's interesting, just the idea of adoption. You know, I, I grew up in a home where I wouldn't quite consider it a Christian home. My mother, you know, uh, loved the Lord, but my dad didn't. Uh, I'm I never went a day without my dad, never spent a night away from home, never missed a day of work, but I never I never knew what it was to have just a spiritual leader, a father in the home. And so just when I became a follower of Christ and really in college, just the idea of a, of a spiritual father that, that can cry out to Abba Father, that can meet every need I have uh, is overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Just, just the fact that uh, when an earthly father will fail us, um, Man, this father will never let us down, and right. it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming thought, and honestly, it's hard to grasp. But you know, in Romans five, it says, "Yet while we're in sin, like He chose, like He loves us, despite right. that." And that's that's incredible. Yeah, Chad, let me let me ask you this: In those moments in your life where it seems like everything's going wrong, mm-hmm. all the circumstances seem out of whack, uh, and you feel unloved, how do you ground yourself in that? I think back to when when I was real young and when bad things would happen, maybe I, you know, fall down or kids would make fun of me or whatever it was. What did you want more than anything? You wanted to crawl up in your dad's lap and have mm-hmm. him tell you everything was going to be okay. And I think, you know, for us, you know, even as adults, there are times where all you want to do is crawl up in Father God's lap and and have him tell you it's going to be okay. And and again, it's the it's the crazy dichotomy of this all-powerful God of the universe who created and controls everything versus this, not versus, but also is this father who loves you more than right. you could ever imagine. Not just loves you, but likes you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there are times I love my kids. I don't like them so much. Uh, but God loves us and There's he likes us. There's probably times God doesn't like you. Too, probably so, probably so. <laughs> but but loves you and wants and just wants to be with you and wants to tell you everything's going to be okay. Now, that doesn't mean that God's not going to 
take you through the fire. You know, right. we, we, we instruct our kids and teach our kids in that same way. It just, but still just this idea of this father that you can go to, that you can talk to, that you can spend time with, that you can worship and, and have this relationship. Again, it's just, it's almost too great for words. Yeah. Well, uh, one verse that, that uh, encourages me is John chapter one, uh, verse 12 and 13. Check out this. It says, yet to all who received him, to all who received Jesus, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Mm -hmm. Check this out. Verse 13, children born not of a natural descent, nor of a human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. Mm -hmm. I mean, how incredible is that, that God is the one who awakens this life in us, deposits his Holy Spirit on it, in us, gives us life. Nothing can shake that. If God is the one who calls the birth, the, the Holy Spirit to dwell in us, nothing can take that away. Mm -hmm. Our salvation is secure. And that's the thing that brings hope to me, is this is how much my Father loves me. That even though the circumstances in life get crazy, even though I do stupid things and... Uh, I'm sure I embarrass God at times in how I respond or act, but yet my father doesn't throw me out. Mm. My salvation is secure in Jesus Christ. It never was based on what I did. It was always based on what he did and my surrender to him alone. Man, as you guys in your group continue this conversation, uh, you're going to have heard or you will hear in the message, four truths about God's adoption of us. And you're gonna kinda uh, dig into those some more. Man, there's some powerful stuff there for what God has done for you so that you could be adopted, so that you could be brought into mm -hmm. God's family. Um, man, it's just an amazing thing uh, that God would love us that much. As we celebrate this Christmas season, I truly want us to reflect on how much God loves us, how much God has done for us, but then also, what does that mean for our lives? Mm. Like what God has called us to. Mm. Man, I hope you guys have a great discussion in your group. Thank you guys for being part of this uh, discussion.